Awesome. Thanks for joining. This is Grace with You Deserve Grace. Our website www.deservegrace.com. Don't forget to like, um, subscribe to this video and follow us on Facebook, deservegrace.com. Um, so today I want to talk to you about maternity leave and preparing financially for that. Um, we'll make the assumption that you're going to take a year off, maybe longer, but nonetheless, the idea is about living on a reduced income. And so with maternity leave, you know, the reason we need to prepare for it is because of the fact that if you're currently working, um, you know, feelings may change, right? You may have your kids and decide you want to stay home. Um, either way, even if you do choose to stay or go back to work, you will have reduced costs, right? With childcare expenses. And so either way, there will be a reduction in income um, after the child is born. And so that's what we're going to talk about preparing for that. And so first thing, right, an option is to if you currently have a mortgage, um, you could do what's called a match a payment or miss a payment, depending on the organization um, that your mortgage is with. They may be able to allow you to actually do double payments right now and have that money go towards the principal right now. But in the event that you need to skip a payment in the future, you can always give them a call and say, hey, I'm, you know, I need to skip the payment for this month. And they would allow you to do that based on how many um, previously banked payments you have. Um, and so the reason that's a really good thing to do is because housing generally is your largest expense. Mm. Sorry. Housing is generally your largest expense. And so by having a plan already for housing and being able to live on that reduced income right now, you'll, it goes a long way, right? Because at the end of the day, you're fortunate enough to have the ability to time um, this reduced income. And so that's the number one reason I definitely recommend being able to double down on those payments right now the other way is to actually just look at what your reduced income would be and start living according to that and save the rest right so you have that opportunity to know that you know if i do get employment insurance my employer tops up for maybe a little bit but after that the majority of my my maternity leave will be at a reduced rate and this is the amount right and if you don't know the amount, you can always call Service Canada and they can give you an estimate of what your reduced amount would be because it is about 55% of your wages, but there's a cap. Um, so if you're earning like 200000 a year, it's not 55% of 200000 a year. Um, and so, yeah, so you want to make sure you check that cap. Um, biggest advantage to living at a lower rate then is because then you're able to make decisions less emotionally after the baby's born. Because let's say you've assumed that, you know what, this is just gonna be short term, I'm gonna go back to work. Um, and then, you know, child's born with um, special needs um, or you yourself actually don't want to go back to work or your spouse all of a sudden decides that they'd rather one of, the, one of you stayed home with the child, right? All those things can creep up. And if you haven't yet been in that position where you're living on your reduced income, then you may make a last minute decision and really be scrambling to adjust for it. So definitely recommend um, giving yourselves as much space as you need to make that decision. A lot of people choose during the time that they are pregnant to actually increase their expenses, right? Such as moving into a bigger home to prepare for the baby, um, things like that. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with that at all, as long as you're able to follow the same idea, right? Of doing either the additional payments or living within what would actually be now your new um, payment and the advantage of starting to do that adjustment is then you can actually start to see um, the different areas that you are comfortable cutting back on right um, a lot of people like to go on a baby moon that's where the money for going on that last trip before baby comes could come from if you're already starting to save on reduced expenses while you're still earning your full income right and so many things you could do with that additional cash um, including topping up, right? Your RSP contributions, because then that means in that year that you're actually home with the baby, you would get a larger tax return as well, right? Assuming, you know, let's say, um, you know, you're due in August and you go ahead and you're topping up your RSPs come next April while you're on mat leave, all of a sudden, boom, you get yourself a bigger um, tax return, which would go a long way, right? To alleviating some of that financial stress of being on mat leave. So lots of options in terms of what you can do to prepare yourself um, car loans work the same way um, some of them will allow you 
to make additional payments and then use those additional payments towards principal payments later if you're not able to make them. So really important to talk to any lenders that you're currently banked with, see what options are available to you. Um, and then on a housing front and regular income front, right? Start, start living that lifestyle. If you know for sure you already have a spot at a daycare, um, start putting that money aside because it's got to come from somewhere, right? Start already preparing yourself for that extra expense and living with that because you already know if you're getting a nanny, same thing. You already know that that's going to be that extra expense. So put that money aside, um, get comfortable already putting it aside. So whether you put it into your savings or towards paying down, you know, larger debt items, whatever the case may be, do something where you can actually feel that this is what our discretionary income come baby is and then start you know you can start saving right for that first vacation with baby to go see grandparents right um you know baby moon we already talked about that so many different things or even traveling together i guess as a family um while you're on leave or even preparing for your for your spouse to also take a longer leave because you could both take leave at the same time right and so if we prepare for this on the side prior to the baby actually arriving in mat leave there's so many options that are available to you um you know everyone's situation is different and so here at you deserve grace we work with you to help you define your version of rich and help you discover um your rich life and so if you want to talk um feel free to go to deservegrace.com on our website and click to book a consultation otherwise continue to follow us here on youtube or on facebook don't forget to like um subscribe to the video and share it with your friends take care mm -hmm.